I have a brand new rear display screen in my Model 3 in the back seat for my kids to be able to view movies and games while I'm driving, especially on long trips. This is especially convenient. I have a discount code on Hanshaw Auto. You can check it out down below. There's a link in the description where you can get 22% off all Hanshaw accessories. Highly recommend this rear screen. It's the H86. It's the latest and greatest screen and it's one cable to control also the front passenger seat. I am a big fan. It took less than 10 minutes to install this thing and it really helps out for long trips, like I said. This is the rear screen in a Tesla Cybertruck. Let's see how it compares to the H86. First of all, on the far left, we have the fan speed control. On the right, we have the volume control, pretty basic five menu icons at the bottom. We have the fan control. This is really nice. Now the Hanshaw definitely does not have this, but this is unique to Cybertruck. The second icon is the seat control. Now this is lacking a little bit in the Cybertruck. The front passenger seat only has forward and reverse control and that's it. And in the back, you can only control the heated seat on the right and the left, nothing in the middle and nothing for the driver's seat. So the H86 has it beat. The next menu here is the third one is the music. Very basic, pause, forward, reverse. And then we have entertainment, Netflix, YouTube, Hulu, and Twitch. And then settings, you can configure Bluetooth. Let's take a look at the H86. Here on the far left, we have the fan control. If we dive into this, we have a lot of features, fan speed on the left, and then fan temperature on the right. Really nice there. And then you can turn it on for auto. And we have a lot of features at the bottom that I'll get into. Really nice there. The, the purified air option on the far left is one of the best features in my opinion. The, the second option that we have here is the seats. And this is really, really nice. We have the option to control all seats. And then we have the seat adjustment for the front passenger seat as well as a massage control feature built in. And the seats, you can go back and forth and also pivot the chair. Music control, pretty basic here, similar to what we saw on the Cybertruck. Nothing fancy, but a lot of options there to control the music. And then we have the menu icon. A lot of different icons, a lot of flexibility here. I love how many different access points we have within this screen. There's, uh, you can screen play your Android or your CarPlay or your iOS over to the, this H86. And then the entertainment is really cool. We have Netflix, YouTube, local video, and TikTok that are all built in. A lot of nice entertainment features there. And then finally, the settings page. And the settings page, pretty basic, can control the time zone and other features like that. So I'm gonna open it up. You can see I've got a little bit of damage down in the bottom left-hand corner. I don't think that affected the product itself, but I'm gonna open it up here with all of you for the very first time and I'm gonna install it from front to finish just to see how painless this process is. And I have to give you a little bit of a hint. I have installed one of these before. <laughs> so I have a little bit of an advantage because I get to compare it to another screen called the T10 from Tilliard a little bit different model so you get to see how this maybe compares if it's faster maybe the features are better worse so it's got this gonna it slowly opens up now here's a little hack for all of you that have seen these products before where the box slides open and it's slowly opening up like that the faster way to do it is to put your fingers in on the sides and watch this it just slides right out so once it comes out, you can see that it comes with a little instruction guide. There is an instruction manual QR code on the left and an installation video on the right. I did actually, I'm gonna tell you a little bit of a secret. I did open this up previously just to see this card. And I will say these QR codes are identical. So I think this is a little bit of a printing mistake from Hanshaw. So these two QR codes are the same. There is some useful information. It's really the installation manual that it takes you to. If you go on YouTube, you can find installation tips and tricks. This QR code on the back takes you to their website. Not that hard to get to anyway, but it's a nice little fast way of getting there. So that comes first. So inside of the box, you get this styrofoam on the sides with nice little cushion. I'm gonna take these off. Get a blue bag and then tucked away inside of here, you get your little tools and a cable. 
We get our little wedge, which allows us to take the back unit off. We'll get into that here in a minute. We get our cable. So this goes into the car system down below. I'll show you the installation here in a moment. And then this plugs into the screen. And then last but not least, we have a connector here for the newer models. I have a 2019, it was manufactured in March of 2019. I actually don't need this. This is if you have uh, wireless charging. And this is basically like a terminating resistor that allows you to, to cap the existing plug that is in your car. Now my car has the older plug style, so I will not be needing this. So I'll put this back into the bag. And then lastly, you get a nice little touch here. This is a handshawl USB-C to USB-A adapter. So kind of nice that they give you this. And the big reason for this is because you want to use a USB stick and then you plug this into the left port and you get to watch all of your movies. That is a really cool feature, especially for the kids to be able to watch movies on a long road trip without having to have a connection because some of the other displays, including this one, you can stream video over Netflix or YouTube, but the challenge there is you need to have a hotspot. You need to have wireless connectivity. And that's not always possible on a long road trip. This display is a lot larger in size compared to the Tilliard screen that I reviewed. And I can see straight away down at the bottom, I can see some icons showing up. It's hard to see on the camera here. But the nice thing is that these things are moving back and forth. So you get some control. It looks like it's just side to side. You can't move it up and down. The existing display or the exist, existing AC control unit in the back allowed you to go up and down and left and right. But this is just left and right. So that's fine. It's not a huge deal that you can't adjust it up and down. And you get an RST. I suppose this is like a reset. If you put a ballpoint pen or another like a safety pin inside of here, you could probably do a full reset. On the left side, you get your data and charging. And then on the right side, you get char high speed charging. Now I will say with the Tilliard T10, when I reviewed it, this right USB port upon a lot more testing did not actually work. And I did provide that feedback. We're gonna find out if this one works on the Hanshaw unit. And if it does, that's great because most passengers are not gonna know that. They might plug in their phone and be like, uh, what's going on? Why isn't it charging? So we're gonna see how that operates. Let's peel off the screen. I'll wait until we put it onto the unit to do that. How about that? In the back, you see we have this styrofoam going all the way around. Really nice. That's necessary to prevent air from leaking out. And then you get a cable that connects to the other cable. And then on the side, right over here, there's a, a little port. And that port allows you to connect the other connector. So just so you can see that, up here we have two cables. This white one is gonna go into the white port here. And then this one is gonna connect into this port here. So really it's these two going directly into this unit. And the existing cable, I had to ask this question, what do you do with it? Because on the newer cars, you cap it with that little terminating resistor. But on the older cars, since there's no wireless charging, you don't need to cap it at all. You just let it rest and sit there. I'm very curious. The number one thing I wanna know is if you can adjust dark mode versus light mode. Because on the Tilliard model, you if you went into the dark mode, it looked so much better. So I'm curious to find out if you have that option here. And then we, of course we'll get connected over Wi-Fi and I wanna check out some of the entertainment system options. Now this is Android, so you are gonna have access to the Android Google Play Store and then you can download apps, free apps like games and music apps, all sorts of stuff like that. And then you can put whatever you want on here. And then there's also access to memory. So you can bring in your own files if you want. So pretty flexible having that Android interface. So let's hop into the back and install this thing. The existing unit here comes off really, really easily. You just grab it like this and pull. Don't be too afraid. It comes off fairly easily. And then there's a cable right down here on the bottom. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is press on a little, a little tab right here and press down. 
and pull the cable out. Okay, really, really simple. The existing unit comes out, you can set it aside. Next, what you're gonna wanna do is pull the bottom piece out. So let me show you that. Let's come on down here. So you can see down here, there is a section. Now you can use the, the little wedge in this is nice and convenient. You can push it inside of here, but you know what? <laughs> because I've done this and practiced this a couple times, I'm gonna tell you it works and maybe it's easier for me on my model, but you can just grab at the bottom like this, put both hands like this, pull, and this thing comes off. You don't really need a wedge. So that thing comes off like that. And there's one, two, three, four, five different connectors on that unit. And it works best if you pull from the bottom. Next, what we're, what we're going to want to do is remove this connector. But before we do that, I'm going to unscrew these little screws. So you're going to use a T20 screwdriver. Okay, just like that. Set those screws just on the floor. Just get them out of the way a little bit. And then next, what you're going to want to do is pull this cable out. So there's a little tab right here. Pull that out. Next, what you're gonna to wanna to do is take your cable here and connect it to this existing plug. It's gonna click, so watch, I'm gonna push it in. And hear that little click. Once you do that, you connect the other one in here as well. Pop that into place, great. And you can tuck this in here, not too necessary. You're gonna find that, that there's a, enough leeway with the existing with the um, cover piece that goes up there that you don't need to get too carried away pushing that inside of there, but you can push it all the way in to get it out of the way. Next, this unit here comes off. It's best to pull from the bottom. So I'm gonna pull right now. You can hear little snap noises. Once that comes off, you're just gonna grab it here, pull, pull the rest of it off and set that aside. And all, the only reason why you do that is that so you can route the cables. So here's your existing cable, and what you're going to do is take this and tuck it away. What I like to do is to take it, pull it all the way up over the side, a little bit of a tight area to get it up over there, and then push that inside of here. And again, you don't need to use that terminating plug or anything. You just tuck that in there, and that will rest in there just fine. You don't need to do anything else. And then next, we've got a lot of extra cable here that we're not going to really need to use. So we're going to cover this back up in the, in the center, and we'll just tuck that, that cable away. So you see I'm kind of pulling the cable up, pulling that slack cable up, and then bringing this here, and then pushing it back into place. Just like so. And this cable here, we're just going to tuck it inside of here. All this extra slack is just gonna reside inside of here on the bottom. Not a big deal, we'll leave these cables out and we're gonna put that on the screen here next. Before we do that, let's secure the bottom since we're done down there. Great, and now we will take our little cover unit and this is super simple. This is the part that I love, this is my favorite part. Just take this, push it in place, boom, done. All right, this is the best part. Here is the display, it's quite heavy. You can see we have the connector there piece on the right. I believe that's gonna go on the, okay, it goes the other way. So it's gonna go toward the inside. That should save you guys, what, like two seconds. We're gonna push that in place. There we go, it snapped down. So let's just see if that's the power. That is not the power. I don't know exactly what that is providing. It has a little name on the sticker, but uh, that is now in place. Second one is this one. So we're gonna take the other cable and plug it into here. There we go, and then that should be powering it up. There, it's coming online. Look at that, that's really slick, isn't it? I like the way that looks. Last little detail here is to, to tuck these cables away. So I'm just gonna just jam the, the cables all the way down on the bottom and get them out of the way. You can see here you have also options that aren't available in the other screen for dog mode, camp mode, 
child lock is available in the other one. Although, no, it's not because the child lock gives you a passcode and there's a passcode in the user manual. It starts with an eight. It's a, it's an in intricate password that I'm gonna have to commit to memory here. I think you, you're probably able to change it. You can keep the temperature though. That's the same in the other screen. And then Anion, I don't know what that is. Oh, Anion, that's the Ion. Hmm, I don't know how that works. You, it, it, it's making a small buzzing sound. So it, it has some technology built into it to purify the air somehow. That is really interesting to me. And on the inside of the unit itself, which I, I really hesitate to pull it open again, I did see something. Why not? Let's do this. So on the inside here, I did see something referencing the ion control see where I saw it there it is you can see right in there it says negative ion generator so it's a 12 volt negative ion generator I'm gonna have to research that a little bit more so it is actually doing something it's not just smoke and mirrors it's it's generating some purified air somehow <laughs> so if that is important to you then this screen would make a lot of sense. Like if you if you have like a lung issue, and you can see also down here the two the two speakers. Um, and this, by the way, it says down here it's the 8.66 overseas edition, and this is a fast speed Android model. So this is the the latest and the greatest from Hanshaw. So it should be pretty fast. We're going to find out here how fast it is. Let's do the first things first. Let's just test this fan speed. Fan speed is going up. I can feel it now back here and I'm sweating to be honest with you. Ah, that feels much better. And these little vents here are nice. I can move them side to side. And I notice I can feel that. Oh, now I, I can feel the air coming out. It took a little while and now the air is coming out. And that is nice being able to move it back and forth. I will say that is really convenient. The other screen had no option for that. This is really nice, guys. That is, that is brilliant. Love that feature. Let's see, temperature, let's bring this down. Let's get it even cooler back here. Now I can smell the air. And especially when I move it here, right in front of the camera, I can smell it really, really clean, really clearly. And now I'm gonna turn on the anion and see if I can notice a difference. <laughs> no, I don't notice a difference, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm sure it's doing something. And we'll turn, we'll turn it back down again because I'm not sure how it sounds on the audio here. Uh, let's take a look under the hood. We've got several different icons down below. Before we get into those, let's remove the screen film here. Here we go. All right. So we've got several icons down here. Let me try to get rid of the glare here for all of you. We have the, the fan speed, the heated seats, the move, movement of the seats, uh, I'm going to be very surprised if this actually moves the front seat. Look at that. It, it moves the front seat. Oh, that is so awesome. It moves the seat without installing the extra cable. You guys, that is really powerful. I love that. You don't have this extra cable. That installation step with the Tilliard screen was a bit of a, a cumbersome process. I don't know what this is. Oh, that's cooled seats. I think that's if you have that option in your car. Open. Let's see what that does. I have no idea what that does. Let's just say, okay, wrong password. Okay, get out of there. I don't know what that is. We'll go to here. This is closing all. So this is like basically all the heated seats. Obviously, if you touch them. A little bit of a delay there. Not as fast as I would like it. I mean, it's not bad. 
try it again, watch responsiveness. So not, not as fast as I would like it. Some of them were faster than others. Music, a little display there. Here are our settings. This is where I want to see if we can get a dark mode. Setting, display, day, night, automatic adjustment. I don't see a night mode. You can see on here you get Chrome, the Google Play Store, YouTube, Netflix, TikTok. Very cool stuff. So I'm going to have to connect Wi-Fi. Let's just see the way to do that. Let's go into settings. I'm going to be in here for the network. And there you go. You add your network. So lots of networks here showing up. So I would select the network that I, I want to use to then connect to from here. Factory setup, more settings, system settings, see what those say, system reset, system restart, clear all data. That is about all that I really wanted to show you guys. I mean, it would be nice to be able to see a night mode here. That's the one thing I was searching for. Oh, there you go, a little menu, a little way of scrolling through the menus. You saw that, I tapped on that icon there and you can access all of the different tabs that you have open. That's kind of nice. And then here's home, going to home. Uh, you get some app options up here, it looks like, for your Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Just tap on those. Okay, it doesn't let you select those. It looks like that's just, those are the options that are there. But this is definitely an option to go back so just bear in mind to, to get back to the menu system, you, you swipe up like this. And here you can select a, a, a quick link to your Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, car settings, system optimize, some nice features up in there, car settings. And yeah, this is the main area. And we have display. And again, no night mode that I'm seeing. And that is a big downside for me I, I like having it dark back here let's see if i turn that off okay, that doesn't change anything the screensaver that's nice it it, it uh, will dim itself after five minutes video music car info audio settings gallery file manager it's kind of nice internal shared storage the last thing what i want to do is ooh, wait a minute Total space, 64 gigabytes. Okay, that's good to know. Available, 47. Out of the box, you have 47 gigs of internal storage. So you can move stuff onto here, up to 47 gigabytes of data. That's pretty cool. CP Link, if I'm not mistaken, allows you to screen play. I mean, you, you, screen, you share your screen. You can share your screen over. Which is kind of nice. Now you can see it just timed out. So I now lost because my uh, car itself, the screen up above has turned itself off. And the reason for that is because I've been sitting here idle for so long. So if I tap on the screen, it's not going to do anything. I'm going to have to tap on the main screen to, to get the power to come back on. So that's nice that this isn't kind of overriding the uh, original screen. There, that woke it up. So there we go, it turns back on again. Uh, just a couple other things I wanna check is what we can do here, right-hand drive. It's just kinda nice to go through all the settings here. Oh, that's that's nice, a multimedia area. But yeah, I wanna check the USB cable connection, so let me go grab a USB cable. Okay, I am back with a iPhone and I have a USB-C to lightning adapter connector cable. So I'm going to plug in the lightning adapter here to the iPhone. And I'm fully assuming that the left port is going to charge the phone. Let's plug it in. There it is. It took a little while and it is charging and immediately pulls up CarPlay. 
That's cool. I don't think the other screen did that. And it brings you straight into the app. That is nice. That is really nice. I, I will say, I love that. Let's unplug it and see if it pulls goes back to the main menu. Okay, it does not. To get to the main menu, I believe you, you have to pull down like this and push that home button. Push it again. Interesting. It just goes to the last app that was open. If you want to go to the main menu, I think you push the temperature control. And here we are again. I really want to see a night mode there. Let's plug it into the right side. This is the high speed charging, supposedly. Let's take a look. Yes, it's charging. This is great, you guys. This is nice. I love that both ports are operational. Woohoo! That is not possible with the other screen. Big fan of that for sure. All the menus are pretty straightforward. So if I, let's see if I can start the music from back here. Oh, I probably hit the middle one. Play. It is beginning to play. I can see up on the main screen, it's swirling around as if it's trying to connect. Volume. Let's see if we can... Oh, okay. Tap up and down. There we go. The volume is working. So I can turn the volume up and down from back here. That's brilliant. Really, really nice. Audio settings, Bluetooth music, gallery. What is the gallery? Okay. Hmm. I'll have to play with that to see, oh, USB. Maybe this is where you can get all of your files. That's kind of like your file manager. A little bit slow to respond to the taps. Maybe I'm just not tapping in the right place. Yeah, I'm probably not. Yeah, there we go. You, it, you have to tap in the exact right place to get it to change. So the responsiveness is pretty good if you get if you tap in the right place. There we go. There. So the far right is where you get into your time settings, and this is where I would assume is the if you can change the skin or the night mode because this dark here is really really nice. I like that. I just want to see that on the main screen, and there's no real way of seeing that here. I think the big thing is the games, and I have not downloaded anything. Here, but the the video display is supposedly very powerful so let me just go offline I'll connect over Wi-Fi and I'll just show you how the videos look on this thing but they are high def it should be really really sharp looking on the back display when you get a video playing full screen all right here is YouTube let's check it out let's watch a trailer here let's see if we can go full screen and let's see if we can get audio on this thing. I am not hearing any audio right now. Oh, I am a little bit. You'd think it'd be like quick access menu screens. Oh, here we go, sound settings. Yes, there we go. Max that out. Yes, that is where you get to it, guys. Let's go back into here now and see if it's gonna take over the, the audio. Okay, yes, play. Oh, it's taking over, okay. Go full screen. Oh, look at this thing. Now, I'm, I'm out in my driveway, so the audio is, I mean, the Wi-Fi is not that great of a connection. So let me move my car real quick and we'll get a better connection. And this should be full volume. Okay, I got this thing connected over the in-car audio, and this is unbelievable. I feel like I'm in a movie theater. Guys, I can't even explain how exciting this is to hear it on the full audio system. You can transmit the audio from the screen 
over to the car, sitting in the back seat, watching a movie on this screen with surround sound. It's like being in a movie theater. It is really incredible. I cannot say that enough. It is so much fun. I wish I was a kid sitting in the back seat watching this. I quite frankly cannot wait until RoboTaxi comes where I can sit in the back seat and watch a movie while my car takes me to the grocery store or to work or wherever it is, that day is coming. This is a must have accessory for your Tesla Model 3 or Model Y. In addition to the video capability, I did go into the settings here and I configured, it's confusing because there's a settings icon here and you go into here and there's limited options. What you really wanna do is scroll down and go into the car settings. This is kind of your, it's a little bit difficult to see. Let me adjust the brightness. This is your Android settings. And inside of here is where you can then specify Bluetooth. So I have paired a, a Bluetooth controller here. You can see the controller right here. I'm gonna see if I can play a game. I went into the Google Play Store and I downloaded this really popular shark game, which allows you to play it while you're not connected online. A lot of games require you to be online. Let's see if it made it into the menu system. So there it is, Hungry Shark. So if I tap on it, let's see what happens here. It's going to come up and it's loading. Here we go. And my controller currently is off. So let me turn the controller on. I'm gonna hold down the power button there. And it hope hopefully will connect. So I've got it on the audio here for the for the car. So let me just turn the volume down here. It's a little bit loud. I had it on full, full blast audio. So now that I have that locked in, let's go back to the apps. And then two ways of doing this, you can select the app from here, or what you can do is tap this icon here and see all of your windows that are currently open, right? So I'm going to select the Hungry Shark that's currently open. So here you guys can get the full experience. You can see it tells you what the buttons on the controller are. Boost, I have not tried this in here. Uh, in fact, it doesn't look like it's lining up with my controller, but let's just say, let's go. And we'll just experiment here. So here the, the shark is going, okay, I'm able to control forward and move the shark around. If I was a kid, I would be playing games in here all day long. I would be hanging out and camping in the car. This is extremely entertaining. I can't say that enough. Awesome, awesome display. Very fun to view videos and to play games and use a Bluetooth controller, Bluetooth headsets, all sorts of options here with this Hanshaw H86 display. Use my discount code TECHGEEK to get yours today. Definitely worth it, highly recommended. See you guys in the next one.